For the past few years, we have been able to bioengineer stem cells from the patient's own body. The process starts with a small dermal biopsy, or sample, taken from the skin. This piece of skin grows in a small container in the laboratory to produce fibroplasts, the ordinary cells that help in wound healing. These cells can then be bioengineered, or switched to a different type of cell, by downloading a new message into the brain center of the cell. This message integrates into the body of the ordinary cell and begins to teach it to behave as if it were a stem cell. By undergoing this dramatic metamorphosis, the cell even begins to look like a stem cell. Essentially, this process sends an ordinary cell back in time to look, feel, and behave like a pluripotent stem cell. The bioengineered stem cell functions just like an embryonic stem cell in that it can produce all of the adult body cell types. That means we can recreate virtually any tissue from an individual patient. The cardiac tissue beats and contracts. Brain tissue communicates between cells. And bone tissue forms calcified structures that are genetically identical to the patient that donated the original sample. The cardiac tissue is even responsive to medications that can increase or decrease how fast the heart beats in the laboratory. This allows us to study the patient's heart muscle without the patient being physically present. To confirm this technology can be used in patients, the HLHS team has ensured that this is a reproducible and reliable process for all patients. To date, we have collected skin samples from over 250 individuals from families affected by HLHS. Five unique cell lines are produced from each individual and are then expanded into millions of cells. This process is completed by storing the samples with barcodes to track the location of over 25,000 tubes of frozen cells. The cells can be stored for decades. The HLHS team uses quality control measures by looking at markers on the surface of the cell using a microscope. We have also developed a special analysis with a cell sorting machine that measures the function of individual cells. The results identify the highest quality cells available. We have begun to perform the testing of treatments on families in the laboratory without needing to give the individual family members the medication directly. Based on the genetic profile of individual HLHS families, we have tested a number of medications that were predicted to be beneficial. Many of the medications were not helpful. However, one of the treatment options did indeed work as predicted to make the heart muscle of the individual with HLHS stronger and better without negatively affecting the heart muscles of the parents. We now imagine further developing these medications beyond the laboratory and bringing them to our patients at home. Each and every day, we are working toward a goal of rapidly developing new individualized treatments to improve the strength of the hearts for all individuals with HLHS.